Welcome to We Gotta Talk, a live weekly talk show and podcast where we like to dig deep. From health to relationships to alternative lifestyles and more, the one thing you will always get is a deep dive. I'm Sunny, a 15-year veteran of TV news, freelance writer, blogger, mom of three, and wife. But most of all, I'm just a die-hard oversharer, someone who's genuinely curious about, well, everything around me. And I can't wait for you to join in on these conversations that I promise will impact, inspire, and entertain you. Now, let's talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first official 2021 episode of We Gotta Talk with Sunny. I am so glad you're here. If you're new to the show, welcome. I know you're going to love what we have in store for you today. If you've been around for a while, thank you for coming back. 2021 is going to be big. We have some incredible people already planned for the year. Starting off today with someone that I feel like was the perfect fit to start a new year because um, it is a time of stress, of change, of intentions to make change. And so we have uh, uh, with us today, Stevie Wright, who is a self-love coach and a breathwork facilitator. So we're going to interview her, not only get the backstory of what breathwork does, what it is, how it works, how it actually can physically change your health, but we're also going to actually run through an exercise. So if you're watching this, um, you'll be able to do it with us. If you're listening on the podcast, don't do this unless you're sitting at your house. Don't do it while you're driving, but go back and listen because she's got some amazing, amazing techniques. Quickly to do a little holiday recap and to just sort of catch up a little bit, I want to bring on producer Rachel, who is currently live in LA. All of my thanks to you for waking up early Hi. because it's seven o'clock in the morning there. Hi. Hey, it's a good change. It's a good way to shake up the week and keep things interesting and see. Oh my gosh. Well, soon you'll be back on the East Coast and this will be less of an issue. Yes. Um, Okay, so do you do resolutions, Rachel? No, I don't believe in them. I think they're a road to disappointment. <laughs> like set, you set yourself up for failure if you're really not like truly committed to doing it. Like when you're like, I'm gonna eat, be, eat healthier and you do it for like a day and then you fail on the second day and then you're like, I'm a failure. I'm never gonna eat healthy, forget it. I'm just gonna stick to this bad way of life. And then it just, falls apart. So they work if you, you know, have mm -hmm. true goals and things in place to help you be successful. Um, but when you just like throw a blanket bullshit statement out there, I don't think those work. I'm going to be healthier for the new year. I right. truly believe in New Year's words. I did um, a little bit of writing on this. I feel like a vibe. I can stick with a vibe for the year or a mantra of some sort. Yeah. Um, I did a little recap on the blog about this, but my word for last year was clarity. And it served me in some ways. I feel like I gained a ton of clarity on things on the professional side of my life and changing things on this end. And then on the personal side, I mean, I learned the lesson, but in a really, really difficult way. I learned the clarity in my personal life was learning what was really important in life through some really, really difficult circumstances. And um, I share this on my Instagram page and I like got permission to talk about it because I'm one of those weirdos that doesn't like to talk about people in their life unless I like, I get them to like, sign a paper, like express permission, because I don't want to like psychologically damage the people. But it was a really rough year. And I know I alluded to this a little at the end of last year, but my mom has Parkinson's disease, which we have had the diagnosis for quite some time, but um, became very, very close to very bad things last year. And we are back on track. And so I'm looking back at 2020 now and realizing the interesting lesson from Clarity wasn't what I expected. I thought I was going to get that lesson through, you know, a positive experience showing me what's important, but it actually turned out to be the most difficult experience of my life or one of them. So, um, you know, but we're, yeah. we're still standing and she's we often, Yeah, we often learn so much from the most difficult moments. It's, um, you know, those are the moments that you get to really be your truest self or at least try to show up as your truest self even through the tough times and the good times mm -hmm. and how how your mom is doing well now she's better yeah i mean we we had to make some changes to her medication and anybody who has someone in their life with a, a, a neurodegenerative disorder or a challenge or issue knows like how quickly things can go off the rails with like a change in a type of medication or prescription and what was interesting about the whole process is um 
trying to navigate the medical system. And I'm not like here to like shit on anyone, but um, you know me, Rach, and you know that I literally physically plunge myself through a brick wall to get an answer to a question. It's just like who I am and how I am. And thank God, because even for someone like me who is relentless, I mean, I was literally had a direct number for the nurse that was helping us in the office. I was calling him and we were buddies. Even with that level of comfort with reaching out and asking questions, it was still the most difficult, difficult thing to get answers and get changes. And so my heart goes out to anyone who is dealing with someone with a chronic issue because the medical system, I feel like this is a separate podcast, but yeah. you know, I, I just, I just do want to offer hope to people who are, who are caretakers right now because yeah. we're coming off of last year, which was just a kick in the ass in so many ways. Um, but you know, it, it's possible and you find your people. And I had my sister and we got through it and there were emergency yeah. trips and last minute changes, but we did it. And, and what was the experience like for you as like a daughter and also a mother to three, like in this new place of life where I think a lot of people, some people have dealt with this, you know, as younger kids with dealing with a parent who is ill or, you know, sick. What was that experience like for you, Sunny, as both like the mom and daughter and then Sunny? It is the great tragic comedy of life, like mm. being a child and being a mother and the duality of that role right now. It's just, it was so poignant because I was seeing my mom literally at her worst and like, sorry, I'm like trying to not, my breath work is coming into my <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so It was hard, you know, um, there were moments we didn't think that she was gonna round the corner. And when you understand as a mother, how she must also be feeling watching her daughters care for her. And then I I have a love for her that's as a daughter. And you know, we all have an inner child, right? So seeing our parents suffer, that doesn't change whether you're four or 40. And um, I was just jumping between those identities, like mm-hmm. caretaker child, caretaker child. And you can't really let the child take over. I would look at my sister and thank God I have her. And we would, I w- we would just lose it. It was mm-hmm. just like, is this gonna, like, is this it? Like, is this how things end? Is this, and and we clung to each other and I'm grateful for her like I never have been before, but it is a real, and everybody gets there, you know? And so I just, um, this is kind of plays into what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. You rebound from these things by learning how to recenter and to step yeah. back. And I do have clarity now, that 2020 word that, that was so important to me and that I kept top of mind last year, because through that challenge, I, I understand what it's like now. I, I like saw a peak of my life 20 years from now, whether it's Parkinson's or whatever else that, that is the end of my parents' lives. We're all gonna get there and it's hard. But I like I like transported there for a minute and it was really hard. And then I, we came back and we're in a good spot. And I, I have that wisdom, I have that clarity. I have a, a sense that I haven't before. So I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that she let me share this too, because you know me, yeah. I like to get like, you know, there's lots of, um, there are a lot of, intricacies to sharing other people's stories, but she allowed me to. And, you know, if anyone out there has someone with Parkinson's, I'm actually working on even getting a doctor and researcher on the show to talk about mm-hmm. it because it is a rapidly, rapidly growing disease um, yeah. in the U.S. So anyhow. Um, well, what's your word for this year? And then we'll bring Stevie in. Did you say, I don't think you said what your word for. Yeah, my word for this year is expansion. And that means to me, um, like expanding and, and owning the space that I'm in, the physical space and the mental space, and, and and just putting out good vibes and energy through this show and through what I put out and just the people in my life, you know? So hopefully it doesn't mean that I'm physically expanding. <laughs> but no. no, it's an expansion of energy. Do you, do you have anything for this year yet, or are you still? You know, I sort of just go with the flow. So I just let the, you know, I, I make different decisions about my life at different times of the year. I don't really uh, focus in on like a January 1st or like my birthday or anything like that. I just sort of try to be really aware of things that come up throughout the year in, in within me of things that I need to work on and I just work on them and I just get through the day and I'm present, do my best to just be present every day and take it as it comes. And obviously, you know, I have goals, like bigger picture goals, um, always, you know, in the back of my mind and I'm working towards them, but uh, both from a like physical work 
life kind of place, but also a mental place. And yeah, that's it. I don't want to put the pressure. I have enough pressure and like stress and anxiety. I feel like creating something like that sometimes backfires for me of like, now I have to do like another thing. And I, I have to flip the mindset on that, obviously, but um, that's- I know you and I know you don't shy away from the work. So we'll, we'll, no. we'll revisit this. We'll hold each other accountable, not to a word or to a goal, but just to like, you know, a little soul to soul check-in. I like it. I like it. Conversation through the year. Um, yeah. okay. Well, let's bring on our guest, and I can't wait to continue talking about um, the the uh, personal development of our of our spirits and our bodies. Stevie Wright, you can bring her up now, Rachel, if you want, is a certified self love coach. Hi, Stevie, and a breathwork facilitator who specializes in helping people open portals to their unlimited potential. She's the founder of the Breath Channel, and guys, if you go through her Instagram, we have her handle there. You will see just some incredible free resources that are already on the channel. But what's really cool about Stevie's work is that she has specific practices for any issue you might be facing, anxiety, um, needing to sleep. I mean, so many things. So Stevie, we're grateful that you came on to the show. Thank you so much for just spending a few minutes with us. And I should also mention you're on the West Coast. So thank you for waking up. Thank you, Sunny. I'm so happy to be here. And this, I was just watching you guys and watching this setup and it's such a beautiful professional setup. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> we try really hard. You know, you put two TV gals together and I was, we we're laughing because I'm like partially OCD with some things and Rachel is too. And they like, they fit together in a really good way. But, um, but yeah, so I, I'm just, I love that we're getting your wisdom out there. I mentioned at the top of the show, the word breath work, which I feel like is um, becoming a trendier phrase that we're hearing. But I wanted to lead off by asking how you define breath work and if it really is um, a solution for, if there's a breath work solution for every ailment. Yeah, so breath work is, um, it's a really, it's, it's thousands of years old. It's been around for a long, long time in a lot of Eastern, uh, Eastern civilizations. It's an incredible way to get out of the mind and into the body. So breath work is scientifically what it does is when there's this much, this much oxygen going into your body, it stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. And that induces a state of calmness, a state of relaxation, a state of rest and digest. And so breath work is a beautiful tool to allow us to get connected to our bodies, um, heal trauma, release anxiety. It's great for, for sleep. It's great for connection to self. It's an incredible tool that I think is, um, it, you know, it's getting so popular in this, our day and age and especially in Western culture. I think it's um, something that is going to really change the game. I want to draw um, a comparison here that I feel like people are going to like roll their eyes, but I'm the type of person who's always looking for connections between different spiritual practices because as a Catholic, I know there are so many people who I'm like the most woo woo of the Catholics, <laughs> but there are people in organized religion who have a an instinctive aversion to anything that they perceive to be weird out of the box. Um, but where I find the value in these practices is it really, if you look at how we practice traditional religions in some ways, they're all meditative and they're all repetitive and they're all encouraging that same like fall into yourself as, as breath work does, which goes to show you that this is truly at the root, that ability to connect, I feel like with so many religions. And I wonder if when you work with clients, um, I'm sure most of them are ready for this work, but how do you encourage someone who's looking to fit this breath work into a meditation practice, into their religious beliefs or anything so that they can use it as, um, you know, tools together? Yeah, great question. Well, I think that you can use this in, in congruence with the, the practices you already do. So if you have a meditation practice, if you have a prayer practice, if you have an affirmation practice, breath work is a wonderful way to take those practices and those rituals and those ceremonies even deeper. So I usually like to do breath work first thing in the morning mm -hmm. and then my meditation, do my rituals, um, have my have my my journaling practice, do my gratitude practice. But I find that when I do breath work first, it really gets me into my body. I, I feel like my third eye opens. I feel like I have a lot of clarity. I feel like I have uh, a, a direct connection with my intuition. And from there, I can I can um, my other practices and rituals can be more deep mm -hmm. and, and more sacred. 
What is the third eye for anyone who doesn't know? Yeah, it's the chakra right here. And it is the chakra that is connected to uh, intuition, into pristine sight. Um, people have connected to psychic abilities. I don't know a ton about chakras, but I, I do feel like, with especially with breath work, like this one is always a little bit buzzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's guys, for anyone listening on the podcast, she's pointing right between her eyebrows, kind of a little up. Um, I know we hear that phrase, so I just want to kind of tell everybody where where you're pointing. Um, I, I heard this phrase, and I mentioned this on Instagram yesterday because it was so impactful to me. I was at a, the funeral of a friend last year, and there was a spiritual minister there who was um, sort of helping everybody grieve together, which was so beautiful. And that's like a totally different story. This was like... Um, it was just such a beautiful experience to have someone guide you through the initial stages of that grieving process. But he he got up when everybody kind of lost it at the end of a, a video and said, remember, breath work is your first therapist. And I thought, my God, is that profound? Um, what, what does it do in our system? Like, what? Do, how does it physically change us when we do breath work? So again, you're, you're, you're getting into the parasympathetic. So that's the... the, the um rest and digest that's the calmness and, and that's the ease but it also uh, has something does something called alkalosis to the blood so it takes down the ph level a little bit so there's less acidity in your blood and again that is that is um better for healing it's better for you know i had a, a woman reach out to me just the other day um, one of my students in the breath channel uh, which, I'll, which i'll talk about in a little bit but she said i think that you're healing my chronic illness i think that the the practices in the channel are healing my chronic illness. And, you know, I, I wouldn't begin to make any claims about that, but I do, I do say that, you know, the more you can be connected to yourself, the more you are tuning in, uh, dis-ease will, can be a, a part of that healing. Yeah, I, I believe that. And I know that science hasn't gotten there to the way, like the ability for us to like inextricably link this type of thing to healing would be so, so hard, but you, we hear thousands, millions of people who have claimed that these types of things have so positively impacted their lives. So I, I'm a believer that this stuff in practice in conjunction with other things um, can actually work. Let's get to your work on the breath channel. This is such a cool concept, by the way. I feel like I've seen so much in the online world, but when I went to your feed and was just combing through your posts, there was one and you listed every type of breath work exercise that and more that you, you know i know there are more that you have and there was for anxiety for like i said sleeplessness for daily worry so tell us what the breath channel is and what you do there that's different from what we're seeing on instagram yeah so the breath channel is my baby it's my <laughs> my baby i'm so obsessed with it but it's essentially a membership it's an online membership subscription where you can log into your portal and there's a whole grip of videos in there uh, that you can choose from. Choose how you want to feel, do the practice, log out, feel better, get connected, and go about your day. And so there's breath work for anxiety, breath work for manifestation, breath work for digestion, breath work for alignment, uh, letting go, anger, feminine embodiment, um, sleep, higher self. I mean, there's there's a ton in there. And what I wanted to create with the channel is you know, a lot of breathwork practices are, you know, 35, 40 minutes, they're laying down. It can be very, it can be very intense. And uh, I do that kind of breathwork as well. But I think that can be intimidating. And I don't know that everyone wants to spend a couple times a week doing that. So I wanted to make the practices short, quick, easy, but deeply, deeply effective. Um, a way that all the videos in the channel are anywhere from four to 20 minutes. And uh, you can choose one, and it's it's a reset. You're getting rid of, you're clearing energy, you're clearing stress, um, and it's just a, a great practice. I mean, most of my clients use it uh, in their morning, but there's also breath work practices for a midday pick me up, uh, for triggers. Um, there's so many in there, and I add five new videos a month. Oh, wow. Don't you feel like the hardest part of this practice is literally just sitting down to do it? Like, I feel like that is the biggest barrier to entry. Uh, you know what? I, I totally, I, I totally agree. And what I was telling you right before we, we, um, you know, went live is for people who struggle with meditation and who they always say like, my mind always wanders. I can't mm -hmm. get there. Breathwork is an incredible option because it's active. Mm hmm and so you're actually kind of doing something that that takes you out of your head and into your body. And so it's kind of hard to, I mean, 
it still happens, of course, but it's kind of hard to kind of get lost because you're doing a, um, you're following a, a, a ritual, you're following an exercise. Uh, and I, we're, we're going to do one a little bit later. Yeah. We, can we do it now? I'm like really excited because I want to be able to like experience the rest of this interview in a more calm state. Absolutely. So I'm going to, I was thinking I would do a practice with you guys that I do uh, great for stress. It's great for anxiety, great for a quick shift. Great, great for clearing energy in a fast way. Uh, we're going to shorten it a bit just for a time's sake. Uh, mm -hmm. We usually do this whole practice twice. We're going to do 50 breaths through the nose. So it sounds like this. Okay. Okay. 50 breaths through the mouth. We're going to take 10 conscious breaths into the, into the nose, out through the mouth. So it just looks like this. We're going to breathe in and hold for 30 seconds and release. Okay, we can do this. Now, before I, we start this, um, pull over if you're in the car. <laughs> yeah. And also, how deep should those initial breaths be? Um, they're, they're, short, they're short bursts. So the, the belly, you can't see my belly, but it's kind of going. So the, the belly is moving with both the nasal breath and the mouth breath. Okay. That's okay, right. let's do it. I'm really excited. Um, is there anything else we need to do? Does the environment need to be right if we're doing this at home? Quiet, can we do it in bright light? I hope we can. <laughs> there's, there's nothing that's going to harm you with breath work. Um, just find this place that you're comfortable, you're seated, uh, and you can and you can really tap into this. Let's do it. Okay. So closing the eyes, everybody. Feeling your feet or your tailbone on the ground. And in this moment, I want you to really notice the sturdiness and the solidity of the ground. So it's firm, it's solid, the earth has got you. You're surrounded by four walls. You are completely safe in this moment. I always love to set an intention with the breath. So for this breath work, we're going to set the intention to release any stress, release any stagnant energy. The mantra we're going to use is, I am calm. So you can repeat, it, repeat that quietly to yourself. I am calm. I am calm. Starting with the nose, I'll count for you so you don't have to do anything. Starting with the nose in three, two, one. Do with that breath. Good. Beautiful. I am calm. So letting that breath cleanse you, letting it renew you. A little faster, Sunny. One, two, three, four. That's it. That's it. The breath is taking you deeper into the ground. I am calm. Good. Almost there. Beautiful, beautiful work. And to the mouth. Big deep breath in, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And you can add an sigh with that exhale. Five more, I am calm. Beautiful work, staying with that breath. Filling the lungs, big exhale out. Last two. Deep breath in and hold, Sunny. Hold at the top. Oh. 
hold the breath, you've got it. Feeling the tinglys, feeling the energy that you've just created. Coming back to that mantra, I am calm. Letting go in 10 seconds, you've got it. In five, four, three, two, ah. Keeping the eyes closed for one more moment, give a little shake. Beautiful. Feeling the ground beneath you one more time. Thanking yourself for showing up to this practice. And when you're ready, softly opening the eyes. I feel like a little bit high. <laughs> Is that normal? Oh my gosh, like um, like a youth, a little euphoria or something. Totally normal. You you're moving all this energy, and it's it's really normal to have a state of like like buzz and a state of like uh, excite, excitement or if euphoria. Totally normal. Oh my gosh. I will say the I've never done. It always felt a little bit difficult for me to like do energetic breathing alone, but yeah. that was accessible and simple. Like yeah. I think I could do that. I'm like, yeah. what's happening like in the body right now? We talked about the parasympathetic parasympathetic system. Yeah. So, so you're, you're right on the right on the edge of that. So longer breath work, you know, 20, 30 minutes. So you're gonna really tap into that parasympathetic and get into the body. But you but for for with but with this kind of short, I call it integrative breath that you can integrate it into your daily routine. Um, you're you're moving energy. You're 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 clearing stuck emotion. It's interesting because even after what was that three four minutes? Yeah. Sometimes people cry. You know. Sometimes people have a, a an emotional experience because there's something right under the surface that wants to be known and felt. So the breath kind of gives you access to that. Um, I get people cry all the time. I do this on on live. Uh, Instagram live all the time and people are like, I'm, I'm crying and I just needed a relief. Thank you. Oh, it's beautiful. It is. And I, I had that, I have had that experience by the way, in yoga, I was doing hip work and this was at the height of all of the health issues that we were dealing with with my mom. And I, when I say lost it, like puddles on the floor. And I was shocked at how intrinsically connected, like the movement of the body is to the emotions like that. It was, it was beautiful. It really was. I started going to somatic therapy. Have you heard of this? No. Yeah. I started going to somatic therapy therapy about four or five months ago, and it's been absolutely life-changing. So somatic therapy, soma, it means the body. Um, it's, it's therapy for the body. So you're doing, she's helping me guide, she's guiding me into pockets of trauma, pockets of shame, pockets of fear that I didn't even know were there. And the, you know, I, I really believe that a, a lot of the, this work in the personal development space is mindset and thought work, which is wonderful. And I do a lot of that with myself and with my clients. But if you're leaving out the body, I think you're missing a big piece of the puzzle. And mm -hmm. The body is where I believe trauma is stored. It's where actually belief systems are stored. The belief systems are not in your mind. They're in your body. I, yes. yes, I believe that. And so if you're not working with the body and, and getting connected to the body, then you're, you're, um, I think you're, you're missing a big piece of the pie. And, you know, I, I really understand why that can be daunting for people because it hasn't been safe to feel, you know, it's, it hasn't been safe to feel in our past and feeling has been really scary and feeling has brought around a lot of pain. And so it makes sense to kind of be like, mm -mm, I can't go there. But one thing that I've learned in my practice is body is never going to give you anything you can't handle. Mm -hmm. If there's something you really aren't ready for, it won't give it to you. You know, it'll, it'll give it to you in increments in, in bite-sized pieces. And so you can trust that your body knows what it's doing and it has the tools and the capacity right now to, to, to heal some of this stuff that's lying beneath the surface. Can I ask you something and just get your professional opinion on what you think is happening? Um, I, you know, how after you have a really hard cry, a body cry, and you go to breathe in after, and it's <gasps> like, yeah. this. I have been breathing like that for about five. Every deep breath is a, <gasps> like a, like a jolting kind. And, and this is not even in times that I'm outwardly emotional. What could be happening that's, that's holding something in like that? You know, Sunny, you might be just in a kind of ongoing state of stress and ongoing state of fear with, you know, everything you talked about with your mom and, you know, other life stresses. So if you're in an ongoing kind of state of, of 
uh, sympathetic instead of parasympathetic, your breath might is going to be a little bit shallower. So I would I would recommend for you to when you feel that 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 catch to actually um, get on the ground and you either go on all fours or lay on the ground, like lay on, on um, if you have hard wood or even if you have grass or, or if you have a beach near you, I'm not sure where you live, but um, anything where you can get on the ground and get into earth mm -hmm. and let your body just let, take a deep breath and tell your body it's safe to take a deep breath. Ugh. I'm safe in this moment. You know, like allowing, when you feel that catch, just tell your body it's safe to breathe. It's safe to feel and, 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 and kind of push yourself to fill your lungs while, while feeling the support and the safety of the earth. Oh, I like, honestly, I'm like near tears right now, Stevie. Like even hearing you say, like, tell your body it's okay. Like I, we've been holding on to so much and like, I, my story is not unique. And I, I share that only to like, you know, let people know that everyone has, has dealt with something in the past year, but like, I don't know, there's something really special about someone giving you permission to yeah. feel, you know, when you've been holding up whole systems on your shoulders, it's like, I don't know. I feel like I just want to cry and hug you right now. Is that weird? I wish we could. I wish we could. <laughs> may, I offer, <laughs> may I offer one more, one more thing that might be helpful. And this, this might be a little bit harder to get into, but, um, I think you, because you have a three-year-old, right? Yeah, I have three kids. So she's my baby. I have an eight, almost eight and six and a three-year-old. So um, one thing that I've been doing with my somatic therapist is tantruming. Oh, tell me more. <laughs> I feel like I know this. You you know this. That's why I was asking. Like, you know what this looks like. You, It's incredible. Oh my God, Sunny. We don't give ourselves permission to like lose our shit. <laughs> No, and, we do not. And so if you could find time when the kids are out of the house and, and um, you know, if your husband takes them or whatever that looks like, but let yourself go apeshit. Like have a, like, it, like a uh, channel your inner three-year-old. Yeah. Let yourself just be mad at this, your situation and mad at life and mad at God and mad at whatever that looks like, you know, and let yourself just roll around. And I've been like, sc like scream crying and pounding. And luckily my best friend is my neighbor. So she's like, go for it, girl. <laughs> um, next, like good session. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, she can, you know, she can hear me through the wall. She just texts me a heart, you know, <laughs> um, but it, 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 I think actually even more than like letting yourself breathe and cry is going to be so helpful, but also tantruming. It's, it's, I'm telling you, there's something about it that is going to be the, the most cathartic thing you've ever done. I feel like I'm going to try that. You know, they have those rooms where you go in and break glass. Yes. Yeah. Like that would be yes. appropriate too. Yeah. I do, you know, and I am naturally like a, a, a calm processor, which it can be good, but can also lead to exactly what you said. It just, can sort of like cement on top of the underlying stuff. So I'm going to try that and I will report back to you. And I'm grateful and I'm sorry that I cried. Or no, should I apologize? No. I don't know. I don't apologize. No. I honestly though, like, I don't know. It, I This is why leading off this year with this interview was so important to us because if we can find small ways to heal or short practices to do that feel less intimidating, that I think we need to we need to start integrating those. Um, I want to talk to you about fun stuff because um, before we let you go, if people and when people go to your page to check out your work, they're going to notice some incredible singing videos, Stevie. You yeah. sang Beyonce song a couple of days ago, one plus one, I think, right? Yeah. And you are so good. And I like, I don't know why I breezed over this in the bio, but you were on American Idol. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. I was on American Idol when I was 16. So just about uh, 11, what are we, 11, 12 years ago, I was on American Idol. How was that process? Like talk about trying to keep a positive energy field around you. Was it, was it difficult? Was it challenging in any way? Or was it just so cool to be on it? Well, it was so cool to be on it, but it was also very challenging. I was a minor, so I um, had to leave my hometown. I was taken out of I was taken out of school, and my my family had to my mom and I had to move to LA, and we were living in a hotel room for a couple months, and it was um, really difficult and really hard. And I missed my friends, and I missed 
my family and I went to idol school and um, it's just a industry that I don't believe is healthy for kids. I just don't. And, um, you know, I, I was lucky, so nothing, you know, too crazy happened, but uh, I got to the top 36, which is, um, I got right to the part where America votes. Mm -hmm. And I had been really doing well on all my auditions leading up to that point, the audition in my, uh, the, that I, the, I'd auditioned in Phoenix. And so I did incredible there. Um, you know, one of the, my season, there was an, a guest judge named Cara Diaguardi and she, mm -hmm. She was like, that's my favorite girl. And there was all these blogs saying that um, betting on me to win and, um, you know, my my school and my church had vote for Stevie campaigns. It was like a whole thing. And on my live performance, I completely tanked. I really, um, I, I messed, I didn't like forget the lyrics or anything, but I was so terrified. And keep in mind, like I am the other contestants are all professional musicians and they do this for work. And my background is like high school choir. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, when I was about to go on stage, the producer, they want good TV. They want to rally you up. So the producer handed me the microphone and said, um, are we allowed to cuss? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> he handed me the microphone and he said, don't fuck up. You're going to sing in front of 32 million people. Well, that's rude. Fuck him. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I, you know, I took the mic and I, I just, I, I tanked and I, um, and I also like, I had been singing, my style is very old and bluesy and I have kind of an old voice and, um, you know, they were, the producers were like, well, you don't, you don't represent your age group. Well, we want you to sing Taylor Swift. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm 16. And, um, so I sang Taylor Swift and it just wasn't a song for my voice. And I got, uh, eliminated the next night I got sent home and part of me was so excited because I really wanted to go home. I really wanted to go to my English class and I missed my friends and whatever. And it was hard though, because I went back to school and either kids made fun of me because my performance sucked or they thought I was, um, they didn't hang out with me anymore because uh, I thought that I was too good for them. And I, because now it's Stevie's Stevie thinks she's better than us because she was on TV. Right. And, um, so my, my, my school life completely combusted and blew up in my face. And it was really, I was getting bullied quite a bit. And um, also my home life was also not the best because um, my family, you know, bless their heart. They, I, they wanted this for me so bad and they wanted it for our family so bad. And I, I could tell that they were disappointed. And so I felt like I was just a major disappointment to my hometown and I didn't have any friends. And um, it was a really traumatic I actually hadn't, hadn't even um, processed this uh, till like 10 years later, a couple of years ago with my therapist, how tra traumatizing it was and how much it has affected my life um, as an adult. And it is a big part of my story and, and not, it's not why I got into coaching because I don't think I realized that's what was going on, but it's such a big part of why I help overachievers and I help performers and I help people who, um, put their worth in what they do rather than in just who they are mm -hmm. and, and, and want to win, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm actually on a TV show where I'm trying to win, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of my, a lot of my life after that was winning and proving and trying to win love in a lot of ways. And so it's, I think it's a huge reason why I got into the, you know, healing work. You know, I, first of all, I ha I say to you, I, I see your trauma and I respect your story, your, your ability to share your story so much because bullying on any level is just so difficult. And I've, I experienced a little bit of that as well. And um, there's no way sometimes to get out from our own beliefs of ourselves that are given to us by others. And I'm hearing you say this. And I just, I feel for you as someone who's gone through that, as someone who's raising daughters, especially because for some reason there seems to be a more difficult standard held up to girls and women. And I'm sorry for your pain is what I'm trying to say. I do love the turnaround that you've made. And I love that you are teaching people to find who they are because that is something that, I, you know, giving credit to my parents would always say, it's not what, it's who you are that counts. Yeah. Are you nice? To, from the janitor all the way up. It's not about the, you know, you could have the most powerful position in the world and be a t 
total jerk and have a negative impact on the world. Your superpower, we interviewed a guy a couple of weeks ago who's a mentalist and this quote that he said stuck with me, he said, your superpower doesn't have to be world changing, it has to be person changing. And so yeah. the work you do allows us to connect with who we are so we can sort of reverberate that back into the world. So yeah. I'm just, I'm grateful you ended up here because you're doing amazing, amazing things. Right. Appreciate that. Um, so if we want to start, like if this is something that people want to start with and start small and slow, can you tell us what the best way to do that with your channel is maybe what programs to try first? Cause I want people to try it, not get scared away and feel like it's too much of an undertaking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the great news is that I wanted to make the channel so accessible and so affordable to everyone. So it's 20 bucks a month. You can, you can cancel at any time, uh, try it for a month. You know, there's no um, specific specific programs in there, but you what you'll see is you'll you'll sign up, you'll log in, and you'll have access to all the videos that I was talking about earlier. And you can just choose whatever one calls to you. Try the practice, try the breath, and um, see how it feels in your body. And uh, from there, you can you can stay with the channel or not. But honestly, our our retention rate is so good because people love it. The testimonials and the feedback that I get from that thing are so beautiful. And, um, it's really, it's really helping people. So try it for a month, you know, try it, you know, 20 bucks, try it for a month. Um, included in that 20 bucks is I also do biweekly live workshops. And so if you do want to try the longer, more meditative, transformative, uh, type of breathes, you can try those as well. Uh, there's a Facebook group where I do live coaching every Thursday. Um, it's an, it's an incredible amount of value for 20 bucks. And tell us what your goals and word or resolution, however you term it for the year is before we let you go, because I'm curious, someone like you, who is always in tune, if you do that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm a big um, intention setter. So I, I don't, I don't so much, like, I agree with Rachel a little bit. I don't um, so much do resolutions, but I do intentions and I do, uh, I, I create a vivid vision, What it's, um, it's actually, a, it's a real exercise you can do in uh, Google it, but I do. Um, my partner and I, we did a vivid vision for ourselves this year, and we do one for our relationship. We do one for our businesses. We do one for our life as uh, as a whole. We do one for money. Um, and so, my words for this year are uh, ease, receptivity, and trust. I love that. I love that you do with your partner too. I need to snag Andrew into this process. Oh yeah, he we 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 like. Yeah, we, we light candles and we um, make it a whole ritual and he we answer all these questions together and um, it's super special because he's he, he has a vision for where our relationship is headed and I have a vision for our relationship is headed in our sex life and all the things. We just, we get really specific about it. I love that. May you keep that forever, sister. You know, because that is like you do, you know, you get in these long term relationships. And I mean, I'm a weirdo that likes to just like, I'll like sit down and be like, we have to just look at each other for two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I'm like, I don't know. I just, please. <laughs> yeah. So I may steal that and try the vision thing too, you know. Right. Do it. It's really, it's really, really fun. Speaking of, of staring at each other, Patrick and I are starting. Um, that's kind of a tantra practice, practice, right? Oh, I, 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 I could, like emotional exercise for us, like because I feel like I'm, you know, I'm in the kitchen, I'm here, and I'm, and I'm talking to him, and I'm listening out of one ear, and then I'm flipping around. So this for me is a way. You know, this is the weirdest thing. But sometimes I'm like, I forget what your face looks like straight on. You know, yeah. We, text all day. And then when you're here, I'm looking at the side of your face because we're eating dinner together or I'm looking at the side of the other side because we're watching TV. So yeah, I don't know. Is there a benefit to that? Oh yeah. It's a, it's a really, it's a beautiful, um, Patrick and I do eye gazing as well. We go for 10 minutes. Not yeah. Oh, and you, and you, it's incredible how much emotion comes up and how vulnerable it is. Uh, oh, it's insane. But, um, we're starting Tantra with my somatic therapist on on Friday. So I'm really excited what, what doors that's going to open for us. What is that? What is Tantra? So I'm, I'm not going to be the best person to describe this, but essentially what I, what it is, it's, um, the exchange of energy. So we're going to do a lot of it's, it can be very sensual and related to a lot of sexuality, but it's, it's mostly just the exchange of energy. And so we're going to be doing all these practices that allow us to exchange energy and exchange, um, it, just be really intimate and, and, and present with each other. Oh, I love it. Okay. Well, we're totally going to bring in an expert to do a whole week on that here. Oh my God. Absolutely. That's fascinating. Yes. Yeah. I, we have a, I have a week coming up 
next month to healthy sex life. Yeah. So we have that element into it, thanks to your huge. Other. Yeah, that's huge. huge. Um, Stevie, you, I mean, I'm just so grateful for this time. Oh. Thank you very, very Thank much. You. Thank you so much, Sunny. And you're on Instagram at Stevie L. Wright underscore, which is up on the screen. Tell us one more time your website and anywhere else, any other things you want to promote that are happening right now. Yeah. So my website is stevierite.co. Uh, you can go there and you'll see the breath channel right on that homepage. So you'll know how to, how to join. And I have two spots open for my one-on-one -on -one six month coaching container. Awesome. Stevie, thank you. If I can ever help you in any way in the future, please reach out. Thank and Thank you for waking up early with us. Thank you. So, so such an honor. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. See you soon. Oh my God. Was that my favorite interview? That might be my favorite interview ever. Rachel, can you come on for a second? I don't know if it's the endorphins talking. Like, why did I cry? That's the question. Well, I think we might need to bring Stevie back in to explain oh. that. Um, and I will. Uh, but It's a little embarrassing, but you know. You know I, what it is. Listen, I can share with you from a different experience. So I have done, um, it's called Alpha Biotics, Alpha okay. Biotic Alignment. Um, it's not chiropractic, but that's the closest thing to sort of describe it. It's an adjustment of the head. It's a brain reboot. Um, and I did that. And the first time I did it, I literally cried for like, hours on end and then i went repeatedly once a week and for the first like couple of months even just like before i would get to the appointment i would start crying it was like a physical mental release of trauma and stress that i was just carrying in my body so people have and then eventually i stopped crying so don't you know, worry about in the end do you feel like you ended up at a better point than where you started Oh my gosh, 5 million percent. And I'm so sad because he moved out of Los Angeles. So I like can't go get my alignments. But I, you know, you have other releases through breath work and just yeah. things like this and your yoga. Like people, we think it's like wrong or bad or embarrassing. Um, but after a while, I was just like, okay, so I'm going to cry now. And <laughs> like, I would just show up and like it would be like oh, waterworks, you know? Um, all the time you know it's that's crazy yeah i told yeah. you the yoga instructor was like listen don't feel bad when we do hip work and yoga training everyone was crying and i was like <laughs> it's just like I, I was going like this i was wiping my snot on my shirt he was like have a kleenex <laughs> yeah but it's i don't know we this is the time that we need to start releasing some of that yeah. Mm -hmm. last year stevie do you have like a real answer of why the tears flow <laughs> not 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 like a scientific one but i think it's just more that when you allow yourself to be in your body and actually feel it's it's we spend so much of our lives from the neck up mm -hmm. and so when we, we when we allow ourselves to kind of drop down and be with what is and be and be with the sensations and the emotions and the feelings in the body it's like right in this right at the surface mm -hmm. i always joke this this my my superpower and it is also my greatest downfall in life because it's really hard for me to like not feel everything. I am like a typhoon under ice. Like there is a thin, thin layer there that's holding all this crazy stuff underneath. And I don't know sometimes how to corral that, right? Like, so I, I really do want to try these types of practices. Yeah. Like that to me is like a way to make that work. Yep. You, it's funny. If you ever come to one of my workshops and you do a longer breathe, it's going to be, it's going to be so beautiful. I need to do that. When things are back up and running, I'm, I'm headed out there. Rachel, you're coming with me. We're going to be East Coast by then. Sounds we'll, good. We'll, we'll go. Something in person, you know, where you yeah. can feel an energy from people. Absolutely. See yeah. you there. <laughs> I've had All right. Thanks, Stevie. We'll let you go for real this time. Yeah. <laughs> and I will offer a personal testimony as well. I've had the opportunity to do work with Stevie in person um, before we met, I think it's coming up on almost two years now, I think, and um, had the opportunity to do work with her. And she led us through um, some of the eye to, like the, what what was that called? The emotional connection where you like, just let yourself be seen with a stranger and um, <clears throat> all of that. So she's really wonderful. Um, I can tell firsthand. And obviously I recommend 
you're oh. here for the reasons of like proof. Proof is in the pudding with her. She's the real deal. So. And I do hope that after last year and, and the acute traumas that we felt like we were physically locked in. So even little things felt big um, that we can all embrace little things like this, because what used to be sort of considered out there or, or alternative therapies, I find are often the, the quickest and easiest ways. They're the only ways really to truly heal from the inside out. You could you know, there is also something that can cover up the symptom or there's something that can like dig out the rot and bring it up and let it heal. So I'm just hopeful that, that you know, people will be doing some healing this year along with me. But yeah, well, yeah. might not be the only time I cry live on the hey, show. Rachel. <laughs> you know, it's real life. And I um you know, I I have like the critical parent side of my mind that's like, oh, you shouldn't feel this way. You shouldn't be like that. And that's like, no, 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 no. It's actually really utterly normal to have emotions that are not always <clears throat> the positive ones. They're not always the happy, yay, joy, love, you know, excitement. It's actually really super normal to let yourself feel sad or anxious or whatever, as long as you're not living in a permanent state of any one of those emotions, because, you know, emotions are not permanent. That's the thing, mm -hmm. you know, we fluctuate. That's a human experience is fluctuating through all of the emotions. And that's the beautiful thing of life. You know, that's like truly living as hard as the stuff with your mom has been. Like, I know from my own experiences in my own life of like, the really traumatic and and uh, grief moments, as well as the happy and laughter ones, like that's when you're living the most. Even though they're really really hard, some of them, um, you know, they're not permanent. And then you get to experience joy deeper. You get to experience all these other things on a d deeper level. It's true. I mean, you know, we there are times in our lives where we realize why those sayings and those. Um, things that people repeat so frequently are there because it's true. You learn joy after you learn pain, so. Yeah, and letting yourself, giving yourself the permission uh, to feel those things and know that you're gonna be okay and that you're gonna be able to bring yourself out of it and that you can get through it. Like, obviously I didn't know any of this until therapy, which is like the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah. I need to do back, get back on therapy. It's probably why I'm a total like wreck of a person right now. So as I like put that at the bottom of the list and everything else, but um, well, what a fun episode. Rach, thank you yeah. so much for finding Stevie and getting her on and we'll see you back here. Yes. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you all for listening and watching and or watching. Um, if this show brought you any value at all, I beg you, please take a few minutes, leave a rating and review, especially on Apple Podcasts. I'm trying so hard to get to 100 reviews and we are very, very close. I would be tremendously grateful. Also grateful that Stevie spent time with us. As always, we will put her information in show notes. So if you missed any of the websites or handles that she was referencing, it'll all be there. Thank you so much. Here is to a wonderful and beautiful 2021 full of personal growth and feeling our big feelings. I love you all. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week.